It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. As we study, we're going to go through several scriptures on the gift of righteousness. So we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, which is uh, our original scripture that we're using on these lessons. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We love verse 17. We've discussed that earlier. But 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says that he, talking about Jesus, was made to be sin for us that we might be made to be the righteousness of God in him. Amen. In other words, what Jesus did on the cross, in his death, in his resurrection, he paid the penalty for sin fully so that you could be given the gift of righteousness, not only any righteousness, but the righteousness of God, approved of by God himself. Praise the Lord. I then go to Romans 5, 17. Romans 5, 17. <laughs> and uh, Romans 5, 17 says, through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness. The gift, it's a free gift. You can't earn it. I mean, you can't do better to get it. You just have to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And he said, just simply through those two things, you will reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. I mean, I like to reign in life. What does that mean? That means nothing, Satan or Satan cannot have dominion over you. Sickness cannot have dominion over you. Amen. You are redeemed by the blood and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And then go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. We'll look at a couple of passage, passages of scripture. Praise the Lord. Wow. And uh, this is our last morning, so we'll try to cover some of these passages. And Romans chapter 1, verse 16 he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Praise the Lord. In the gospel, the gospel is a revelation of the righteousness of God the righteousness of God. And Lovett's translation says, the gospel, which is what happened in Christ, the death and resurrection of Christ, reveals God's way of making men as righteous as himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the gospel of Christ, tremendous power to produce salvation. Notice your salvation, which is your deliverance, safety, healing, preservation, soundness, is connected to your revelation of righteousness. Notice that your faith is connected to your revelation of righteousness. So it becomes a very significant part of the gospel is to understand that in Christ and by his blood, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. And what that does in you is uh, actually in uh, uh, Isaiah, it says you will be established in righteousness, and you will be far from oppression. Amen. Far from oppression. In other words, once you get established in the subject, then you don't try to approach it some other way. You approach it the New Testament way, you, uh, the New Covenant way. You approach it that way, and then you just plead your case through the blood. And he says, you get established in that, praise the Lord, then you will not be depressed anymore, struggle anymore, amen, be, be uh, out of, uh, what did it say, frustrated and no peace, you know, struggling all the time. In other words, all of that just reveals that you have a limited understanding of righteousness. Y'all still here? And that you could learn some more about it. Or you could put more into application. So here's kind of what uh, it does in you. What does it do when you understand the gift of righteousness? Well, 
it frees you from a sense of guilt and unworthiness. Next, it frees you from the frustration of struggling to be accepted by God. In other words, instead of feeling like you're, you're being rejected or you're not measuring up, you're free from that. Uh, next, <clears throat> it frees us from the fear of the consequences of sin. In other words, when you know you're the righteousness of God, then you know that sin has no dominion over you or all that sin produces. So that's why Jesus had no sense of fear and no sense of lack because he understood the righteousness of God. No sense of lack. No sense of fear concerning your life. You're the righteousness of God. Amen? Next it says it will produce a sense of peace and security in your relationship with God. And not, not a sense of struggling, but a sense of peace. Come on, peace in your heart. Amen. Peace in your mind. And next, it will cause your whole being to swing into harmony with God because the gift of righteousness is a gift, but it is also a spiritual force or it is a spiritual nature. It is God's righteous nature. And that gift of righteousness now in your spirit is God's righteous nature. What will it do? Well, it will inhibit sin and stop Satan's dominion over you because it's not just a gift. It's actually become the divine nature that's in your spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he says it frees us from oppression. Uh, it frees us from a sense of being inadequate. It, it gives us great freedom uh, and to enter the presence of God, and it revolutionizes our prayer life. Praise the Lord. It gives us boldness before the enemy who tries to accuse you. Amen. And it opens the door wide to everything that righteousness has produced. All right, let's try one. In other words, uh, when Jesus became sin, he, he took everything sin produced, and when you were made righteous, it brings everything that righteousness produces. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise so it is the divine nature of God that comes into your spirit so that sin cannot dominate you. Old habits cannot dominate you. Christ has redeemed you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now jump to Romans chapter 3. We'll do a little bit of jumping around here. So Romans chapter 3. And this is really most of the book of Romans, which is a tremendous study in itself, just to study the book of Romans. And uh, Paul's talking about the righteousness, which is by faith. So if you have your Bible, go to Romans chapter 3 and verse 21. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Romans 3, 21 says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24, being justified, which is the same word as righteous, being made righteous or being justified, which we learned in Bible college means that God treats you just as if I'd never sinned. You know, if God sees you through the blood, he treats you just like you never did anything wrong. You justified, and he says, that we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 25. And he says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission. Wow, what is that? That's absolute remission. Amen. That's absolute remission of sin. And he says, the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the patience of God. Verse 26, to declare, I say at this time. Now, that means now a new kind of righteousness has come to the front. It's a revelation of a new kind of righteousness and not dependent upon the law, whether you did or did not do the law. He said this new kind of righteousness is approved by God because God himself produced it. 
And he says, even specifically here, he says, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in the blood of Jesus. So the word propitiation, most people don't use it very much, but the word propitiation means reconciliation. Reconciliation, which means restoration to fellowship and restoration to favor. So now we have a restoration to fellowship, a restoration to favor with God, and he says, and that comes through faith in his blood. How many of y'all have any faith in the blood of Jesus? Well, see, it's a whole different system. It's not based on what you've done or didn't do. And so, to, uh, I think Andrew Murray said it's a way to enjoy this blessing. Nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus, that the blood alone has done everything. Come on, you have to believe that the blood alone has done everything. I said the blood alone has done everything. And when he says we have a propitiation, and then if you have an amplified Bible, it says we have a mercy seat, a mercy seat. And then it, will, it adds Exodus 25, 22, a mercy seat. Why did he say we have a mercy seat? Because that's a picture of the Old Testament where God said, I will meet you at the mercy seat and I will fellowship with you there. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because that's where the blood was applied on the mercy seat. I mean, glad that you got the God and the Father of mercies on your behalf. And God said, if you want to meet with me, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to meet you. I'm going to meet you at the mercy seat. Why? Because that's where the blood is applied. So now in the new covenant, he says, that simply includes faith in the blood of Jesus. That means anywhere the blood of Jesus and you exercise faith in that blood, that becomes a meeting place with God. Amen. So I always tell people, you cannot have a meeting with God and not know it. You cannot have a meeting with God and not be changed. You cannot have a meeting with God without it bringing out, come, you come out happy and, and you have confidence. Somebody said, where you been? I just had a meeting with God. Come on, just, just write down the characters in the Old Testament, the New Testament that had a meeting with God. Are y'all still here? So he says, now if you want the same meeting, God said, I'm going to tell you, I'll meet you if you will exercise faith in the blood of Jesus, that the blood alone has done everything. Your confidence, your expectation, your trust is in his blood. His blood has paid it all. Praise the Lord. How many like to have a meeting with God? So I like to say where, where, where the blood flows, that's where the Holy Spirit goes. In other words, when you honor the blood, then that brings the Spirit of God right in on your case. When you honor the blood, you, know, you can sing about it, you can have confessions, you can meditate on the blood, the power of the blood, get the scriptures about the blood, amen. And there's so many things uh, that are available through the blood. My mama would uh, sling blood everywhere, amen. <laughs> She'd look at us kids and say, I better plead the blood. So, <clears throat> uh, and if we went on trips, I'd plead the blood, amen. And so he says that we have a um, propitiation. Now, y'all know what that means yet? Oh, you weren't paying attention, huh? Uh, we have a propitiation, which means what? Reconciliation. In other words, you're restored to fellowship with God. You're restored to the favor of God. How'd you get that? He says, through faith in his blood. All right, let's keep going a little bit here. Praise the Lord. And he says, and that has produced the remission, absolute remission of sin. Absolute remission. Absolute remission. Hallelujah. Cancellation of penalty. Removal of guilt. Then he goes on, verse 26, I declare at this time his righteousness, that he might be the righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of whoever believes in Jesus. He said, this is the new system. It's all based on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith in his blood. And verse 27, he says, where is boasting then? It is what? Excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. In other words, if you want to have this meeting with God, 
Amen. The, the, the best picture of that is in uh, Luke chapter 18 where the two guys wanted to go up to pray and this is why the Pharisees didn't like Jesus that much. So Jesus tells the story, here's two guys who go to faith. One of them is a, a Pharisee and one of them is a, a sinner. And both of them wanted to pray and uh, here they are and the Pharisee looks over at the sinner and he says, God, I want to thank you. I'm not like him. I don't do the stuff he does. I don't go where he goes. Hey, and then he said, and I want to thank you that I always do this and I do that and got a whole list of what he does, right? And what did the sinner say? Smote himself and he said, God, your mercy. It's your mercy. Have mercy. It's your mercy. You know, every time you plead the blood, you're saying, God, it's your mercy. Not based on what I've done right or what I didn't do wrong. God, it's your mercy. You're the father of mercy. That's how blind Bartimaeus got healed. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Uh, Dad Hagen talked about the, the time he was praying for the sick in that one uh, that church. And he said, uh, there's people in line. He's going to pray for them to be healed. And he got to, the, to one woman and he heard her say before he prayed for her, she said, Lord, you know I ought to be healed because I'm the best Christian in this church. <laughs> he said, I couldn't believe my ears. She said, Lord, you know I ought to be healed. I'm the best Christian in the church. He said, the truth is she really was. He said, but you don't get healed because you're the best Christian. You don't get healed because you've been in church 40 years or 50 years. Uh, come on. How are you going to get healed? So Dad Hagen said we had to change the song that we sang during the healing altar call. We changed the song. And the song is, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Y'all ever heard that song? Just as I am, Billy Graham sang in all of his crusades, just as I am without one plea. In other words, I plead the blood of Jesus. My plea is I plead the blood of Jesus just as I am, not based on what I have done, but based on what Jesus has done on the cross. Amen. He said, and then you can receive your healing. All right, let's try this out. I said, then you can receive your healing. But because you're not coming based on self-righteousness. That's right. It seemed that Jesus disliked self-righteousness more than unrighteousness. In other words, he got along with sinners better than he did with self-righteous people who were constantly proud of what they did or did not do. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. We'll always come to God and meet him through faith in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. Well, you're going to have a meeting with God. I said, you're going to have a meeting with God. Now, if you go the other way you want to go, then you're basically just going to have a meeting with religion. But if you want to have a meeting with a living God, you come based on faith in his blood. And he said, what that does is it removes all boasting. In other words, you can't boast that you're better than somebody else. He said, it removes all boasting. And he says, and it comes by the law of faith. So faith is a spiritual law, how you operate in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Yes. All right, go to Romans chapter 4, another chapter here. Praise the Lord. And so uh, we had lunch yesterday and had discussions on some of this stuff, even at lunch. <laughs> amen. Isn't that good to have a lunch and also get to discuss the word? And so Pastor Vicky brought up this. It's, it's Romans chapter 4 and verse 4 and 5. Romans chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. And it says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Look at somebody and say, You, you know, I qualify for that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, him that justifies the ungodly, <laughs> right, look at that, believe on him, not of works, but believe on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen? So let me give you this, and I've got it here in the Passion Translation. Um, and the Passion Translation says, 
when people work, they earn wages. It can't be considered a free gift because they earned it. But no one earns God's righteousness. All right, let's try it one more time. So as Vicky said, amen. So I got in the Passion Translation. I thought that's good. He says, if, you, if you're working for it, come on, then, then you earned it. So it's not a gift. But he said, no one earns God's righteousness. It can only be transferred when we no longer rely on our own works, but believe in the one who powerfully declares the ungodly to be righteous. All right, let's try it one more time. We believe in the one that declares the ungodly to be righteous in his eyes. It is faith that transfers God's righteousness into your account. In other words, the transfer happens when you say, I can no longer earn this. I can no longer struggle hard enough. I can no longer try hard enough. I just believe that the blood of Jesus has paid for it, and I receive that by faith. And he said, the moment you just turn it over to God, amen. And so uh, Vicky was pointing out that even Jesus, when he went to the cross, that he had to trust in the God that justifies or declares righteous the ungodly. You say, why? Well, go to Romans 4.25. You'll see why he had to believe that. And he says, and you and I live by that faith, faith in the Son of God. In other words, Jesus himself had to have faith because when he's made to be sin, he has to have faith that God justifies the ungodly. All right, right? Did I get that right? Amen. And so then you go to Romans 4, 25, and it says, on the cross, Jesus was delivered up because of our sins and our offenses, and he was raised because of our justification. All right, let's try it one more time. So here's the way to get it. Amen. You're going to have faith that God has declared you righteous because of what Jesus has done for you. So what he's saying is simply this. <laughs> Jesus went to the cross and became sin because of our offenses. And he was raised because of our justification. Amen. Oh, but I got it one more way. You right? I got it one more way. Amen. That Jesus went to the cross because of our sin. He took our ungodliness. He went to the cross because of our sin and he was raised when we were declared righteous. So Jesus could not have been raised from the dead until you were declared justified. No more charges against you. Come on. And you, Jesus was not raised from the dead until you were declared not guilty. All right, let's try this. I said Jesus was not raised from the dead until you were declared not guilty. Amen. You were declared justified and you were declared as righteous by the righteousness that God produced and Jesus submitted himself by faith. So literally you can just hook up to the faith of Jesus. Because I was there. Jesus took me there. Amen. Amen. And then when he was declared righteous, he was there in our behalf. We were declared righteous. Y'all still here? Amen. All right, then jump over to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo. Where, where are y'all headed to? Romans? We did Romans 5, 17, the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness. Before we get to Romans 10, look at Romans chapter 8. In verse 31 and 32, and it says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? He spared not his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Oh, but look at the next verse. And who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that has declared you righteous. All right, let's try that one more time. And who 
Going, who could bring a charge against you? Even the devil himself, the accuser, and any person that's listening to the devil. Who could bring a charge against God's elect? It is God that has declared you righteous. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Have you ever dealt with shame or guilt and felt like you would never measure up? When you understand you have God's divine approval in your life, it sets you free from a sense of rejection, inadequacy, or inferiority. When you know you are approved by God, you are then free to receive God's best blessing and follow His plan for your life. In this four CD set, Divine Approval, Pastor Mark Hankins will help you understand your divine approval, the radical revelation of righteousness. Righteousness is a free gift from God and you are 100% righteous. When you are born again, you have first class righteousness. With this offer, we also will send you the book, Divine Approval, Understanding Righteousness. Pastor Mark will help you understand that righteousness is a reality produced for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop looking for approval and acceptance in this world. Receive your divine approval today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. I don't know about you, but I am always so blessed by the ministry and the word that my parents bring. Just so much light and so much revelation. And my parents really want to make sure that you're able to get that into your own home. When you get it into your home, you can get it into your heart. You can read it. You can look at it. You can share it. So we want to make sure that we can get this book to you for your gift of any amount. And your gift is also going toward Mark Hank Ministry Conference Center. This is huge. This is exciting and you get to be a part. So thank you for calling the number on the screen or visiting markhankins.org. Until next time, have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.